I want to share with you today from the book of 2 Samuel chapter 9. 2 Samuel chapter 9, David the king said, Is there anybody left of the house of Saul that I may show the kindness of God unto him? Is there anybody left? And the Bible says they told him, a man by the name of Ziba told him that there was a man, a son of Jonathan, whose name was Mephibosheth. Mephibosheth was running, her, his nurse was running with him when he was a boy and he fell out of her hands and broke both of his legs and became lame in the feet. And the Bible says he was living in a place called Lodibar. Here is a prince with broken legs, lame in the feet, living in Lodibar. And uh, the king desired to show the kindness of God unto him. And you know what God told me a few days ago? He said, that's what I am doing in the world. I am summonsing my people who are left regardless of what you have been through. In a mere day that you are not dead, meaning that you are not done. There are some things I want to bring to pass in your life. You've been through hell, but you are still here. Is there anybody know what I'm I'm talking about you've been sure what would have killed other people and there were times you thought you would have lost your mind but I'm still here I was knocked down but I'm still here is there anybody know what I'm talking about today I went through things that will kill most people, but by the grace of God I'm here I made it come on tell somebody I made it there's so many others that are left. There's so many others that started a journey, but they are not here today. But by the grace of God, I'm still here. Hear what the king said. Is there anybody left of the house of Saul that I may show the kindness of God unto him? And the reason why you are still here is because God has appointed a time in which he will show you kindness. In other words, this is the time when God is going to vindicate some people here. He's going to open doors for you. He is going to make you an example of his divine favor. Oh, I think I'm talking to the right people today. He's going to make you an example of his divine favor. So they called Mephibosheth and brought him in the presence of the king. When he was brought in the presence of the king, the king said, Are you Mephibosheth? He says, Thy servant is he. And the Bible says he bowed with his face to the ground in reverence to the king. I want to show you today how you can walk in that divine favor. How can this be the best time of your life? Regardless what is going on in the world, the world can be in darkness, but you're going to be walking in light. I say the world can go through difficult hell. Man, you're going to be living in the glory of the Most High God. People are going to want to know how is it you are making it. And you will be able to tell them it is the doing of the Lord and is marvelous in my eyes. Get ready for God to show you such favor that you will be surprised how you're going to be making it today. Get ready for supernatural intervention in your life. Get ready for doors to open that was never open for nobody in your generation but it's going to happen for you. Because the king has ordained the time in which he is going to show you favor. Come on, tell somebody favor, favor. The king is...
is going to show you favor. Hear what the king said. Is there anybody left that I may show them the kindness of God? But my fever said was wise. When he came in the presence of the king in order to receive this favor, you must meet the king with reverence and honor. The Bible says he bowed down in the presence of the king. And the king said, I'm going to give you back all the land that was taken away from your father and your grandfather. In other words, there is going to be vindication. There is going to be validation and there is going to be restoration in your life. Has there any been anything in your life that was taken away? Has there been anything in your life that you have lost? Get ready for it to all be restored. There is going to be restoration in the house of God. But that was not really the important thing as far as the king is concerned. He was giving back the land and restoring all of that was really not the thing the king considered most important. And the most important thing the king wanted was for Mephibosheth to eat at his table every day. He says, I'm going to give you your land. I'm going to give you the sons of Zeba to raise your crops. But you would never eat of your own food. You're going to sit at my table for the rest of your life as a prince in the house of the king. I came to tell somebody today, you're going to be elevated in a realm with the king of glory. And everybody who know you in the past will know that God has done something in your life and he alone will receive the glory. Now hear what he said. He's saying, I'm going to give you back your land. I'm going to give you back all these things. But he said, you are going to eat at my table. In other words, I want you to come into a relationship with me. And that's what we want to talk about today. God is saying in the world, throughout the world, the time has come. He is summonsing those people who he is, who are left. And he is saying to them, I want you to come into my house. I want a relationship with you. And the first thing when you begin to eat at the table of the king, there is no way Mephibosheth can sit at the table of the king and not begin to develop an intimate relationship with the person of the king. I'm talking about I'm not talking about a a theoretical knowledge of the king. I'm talking about an experiential knowledge of the person of the king. You see, today there are lots of people go to church and they know about Jesus. But they don't know Jesus personally. You see, when you know who Jesus is, there is no devil that can stop you. When I know that I know that I know that he is the king of glory. Come on, somebody. When I know that he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. When I know that he was the one that died on a cross and was buried in the grave and descended into hell and took the keys of death and hell and rose again from the dead. When I know... Come on, I said, when I know who he is. That's why Paul says that I might know him. Tell somebody, I want to know him. You see, when I know him, hear what Paul says, that I might know him in the power of his resurrection and in the fellowship of his suffering. Being made conformable unto his death. When I know who Jesus is. 
When I know who he is, I can face life because he conquered life. When I know who he is, I can face the world because I know whom I believe. Paul says, I know in whom I have believed and I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day. I know that even when I die, he is going to be with me. I know that he would never leave me nor forsake me. I know I don't matter where I go, he's going to be there with me. To know Jesus personally. Daniel says, they that do know their God shall be strong. And that's what God wants. God wants us to know him personally. You got to know him. You must understand him. You must see him. You must have a revelation of who he is. When you know Jesus, you will be unmovable, unshakable. There is nothing nobody can do to stop me because I know who I believe. Come on, hallelujah. Yeah, Jonah was in the belly of a fish. He was at the bottom of the ocean, but he know. He said, even though I'm in the belly of a fish, I will lift up my eyes to you. I look at people today, and they're easily moved, easily discouraged, walk away from everything, offended all the time. It's because they don't know who Jesus is. You see, when you know who Jesus is, nobody can offend you. They can try, but you can overcome it. For the Bible says, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue that rises up against you in judgment, you will condemn it. Come on, hallelujah. Not God is going to condemn it. You will condemn it. I know who I am. Come on, tell somebody. You got to know who you are. You see, when you know who Jesus is, you will know who you are. Come on, hallelujah. When I know who Jesus is, Jesus is not another religious leader. He is the word. The Bible says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God. And the word was God. So I realize that what really the king desire is for Mephibah said to be here in his presence, to become acquainted with his voice. Job says, acquaint now thyself with him and be at peace. When you know who Jesus is, the second thing he wanted him to do was not only to know the person of Jesus, but he wanted him to know the purpose of, of the king for his life. And the Bible says, those whom he foreknew, them he also predestinate to be confirmed to the image of his son and those whom he predestinate them he called and those whom he called them he justify and those whom he justify them he glorify you are not here on the earth by accident God has a destiny for you come on say yes somebody God has a destiny for you. And this destiny was not made yesterday. He did it from eternity past. Before he made the angels, he had me on his mind. Come on, say yes, somebody. He had you on his mind and he went ahead and made a destiny for you. And those whom he, he, he predestinated, the Bible says, them he called. And those whom he called, them he justified. And those whom he justified, them he glorified. The word glorify means to endow with everything to fulfill the assignment for which he put you on the earth. How many of you believe that he is going to give you everything that you can fulfill all that he has for you? 
Come on, how many of you believe he can open all the doors? How many of you believe he is going to give you all that you need so that you can do all he asks you to do? Come on, hallelujah. I believe it. The Bible says, them he glorify. In other words, he is going to open the doors and release in your life the grace to do it, the anointing to do it, the favor to do it, the money to do it. Whatever he has called you to do, this is God's season to do it in your life. If you can only believe that some of you are going home with what you've been believing for all your life, you're going to receive it on the inside. The third thing he wanted him to experience in his presence was not only to know the person of the king and to know the purpose of the king, but he wanted him to experience and to walk in the plans of the king. He must know on a day-to-day basis the time has come. You cannot just live like everybody else. You got to be led by the Spirit of God. Come on, I said, you got to be led by the Spirit of God. I was called during this week, uh, a wife of one of my people that I've known. And this is the guy who do business with diamonds and do business with gold and all of that. And these men wanted to steal the commodities that he had. And they put some kind of poison or something on the handle of the car that he was driving. He came into a gas station and they put it, and when he came back and touched it, the poison penetrated his body. And they were able to smash the car and steal everything that he had in it. Today, you cannot just live like anybody else. You got to be led by the Spirit of God. Come on, I said you got to be led. The Holy Ghost can tell you where to go. He can tell you what to do. He can tell you who can talk to. He can tell you that's not your friend. Come on, hallelujah. The Holy Ghost can show you exactly what God wants for you. So the Bible says they that are the sons of God will be led by the Spirit of God. The third, the fourth thing that he wanted him to experience was not only the person to know the person of the king and the purpose of the king and the plans of the king, but he wanted him to become acquainted with the presence of the king. You see, when you know the presence of God in your life, you cannot live without it. If you have ever experienced his presence in your life, you would know that you can't live without it. That's why the Bible says, they that wait upon the Lord shall, say it with me, they that wait upon the Lord shall shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And I say to you today, church, the time has come in the season and day and hour in which we live. We cannot make it without God's presence. We can't have church like everybody else. We got to go the other mile. Come on. You got to be open. We don't want church like anybody else. We want God to show up in this place. We want to experience the holy presence of God in our lives. The Bible says even the youths shall faint and be weary. And the young men shall utterly fail. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. You see, there is nothing like the presence of God. The Shekinah, the presence of God enable you to do what you can't do. The presence of God can show you what you could never see. The presence of God is going to take you where you could never go. The presence of God will deliver you from the bondages that have been in your life all your life. But one moment in the presence of Jesus and you will be set free. For the Bible says in the presence of the Lord there is fullness of joy and at his right hand 
in near pleasures forevermore. Come on, hallelujah. When you enter God's presence, the atmosphere changes. Come on, somebody. When you enter and God show up, the next thing you know is that I used to be bound, but now I'm free. For the Bible says, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. There's so many people struggling with all kinds of bondages in your life. What you need is the Holy Spirit in your life. Come on, I said what you need is the presence of God. Hallelujah. When the presence of God show up, it's like Samson. The Bible says there are thousands came against Samson and he was there all alone. Then all of a sudden, the spirit of God came upon him. He took the jawbone of a donkey and killed a thousand. He could not have done it by himself, but in the presence of the Lord. Come on, Hallelujah. In the presence of Jesus, the weak is made strong. In the presence of Jesus, the bound is loosed. I know people with stroke and if you put them to walk, they can't walk by themselves. You put them in the sea, in the water, and all of a sudden they can move because the water give buoyancy. In the presence of God, you will be able to do what you can do. Some of you said, but I don't know the worship. All you got to do in the presence of God is open up your mouth and begin to bless the Lord. And I promise you, he is going to show up in your life. In the presence of the king, that which was impossible becomes possible. In the presence of the king, the things that you thought you could never overcome, all of a sudden the shackles are broken. All of a sudden your eyes can see. All of a sudden there is new energy. There is a new renewing in your heart. One moment in the presence of Jesus. John said, I turned to see the voice that's speaking to me. And being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks and one standing in the presence of the candlesticks like unto the Son of Man. He says, when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. And he put his right hand on me and raised me up. Let me tell you, this was John who was left alone. My but in the presence of God, your life will be fulfilled. In the presence of God, doors will open. I prophesy to you that those demons that think they're bad, they're only bad because God is show up yet. In the moment Jesus show up, devils got to run because there is no one. And the Bible says God has given to him all power. Jesus said all power is given unto me in heaven and on earth. Even under the earth. God has given him a name. So the four things that God, want, the king wanted was for him to know the person of the king. And the purpose of the king. The plans of the king. And the presence of the king. But not only that, he wanted him to know the power of the king. Today I want to announce to you that Jesus Christ is Lord. Come on, shout it out if you believe it. Jesus Christ is Lord. Hallelujah. In Revelation chapter 5, the, eight, the elders said, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain. They receive glory and honor and power. And the Bible says God has given him a name that's above every other name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess 
that Jesus Christ is law. We are living in a strange time today. We are living in a time in which everything seems to be going wrong. But everything, and I came to tell you today that when darkness seemed to cover the earth, that's the time to rejoice because the Bible says the glory of the Lord shall be seen upon you. When the world is in darkness, in the church will experience the glory of God. I said the church will experience the glory of God. And the Bible says rise and shine for your light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. This is not bad news for the church. It is good news for the church. Come on, hallelujah. Yes, Lord, God has given Jesus a name. I prophesy to you, just like the pandemic came and covered the nations, I prophesy that the glory of God shall cover the earth as the water covers the sea. This is the best time to be alive. Come on, hallelujah. This is a good time to be alive. You were alive at the time when God was show the earth that Jesus Christ is Lord. This is not a time to weep and mourn. It's not a time to be discouraged. It's a time to enter his presence and you will experience his power. I prophesy that we're going to come here and church and God is going to show up and he is bringing us closer and closer. He is going to show up in his might and power. I will see miracles today. Come on, hallelujah. There will be miracles today. There will be miracles in this season. God is going to show the earth that Jesus Jesus Christ is Lord. Hear what the Bible says. The Bible said it very, very clearly. He says, God has given him a name that's above every other name. And that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. And every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. That's what he is saying. I'm summonsing my people from all over the nations. I want you to come in my presence. I want you to eat at my table. I don't want you to worship me from afar. I want you to come. I want you to see me. I want you to know me. I want you to walk with me. I want you to experience me. I want you to become acquainted with me. I want you to know my presence. I want you to know my power. I don't want you to live in bondage no more. This is the time when the power of God is going to show up in your life in ways. Some of you are going to experience such power. Are you going to wake up in the middle of the night totally delivered from the things that torment you? You're going to know that. Jesus is Lord. Come on, say yes. You are not even going to need no money to lay hands on you. You're going to be able to lay hands on your own self. Come on, hallelujah, because I am what I am. By the grace of God. Hear what he is saying. The king saying, I want my people to come and eat at my table. I want them to be acquainted with me. I want them to know me. Let the worshipers come back. Stand upon your feet with me in the name of Jesus.